This is part 16 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss creating and using a custom validator with parameters. This is continuation to our previous video, part 15. In part 15, we discussed creating a custom email validator and here is that email validator function. This function returns null if the domain that we have entered is presumetech.com to indicate that the control has passed validation. If we enter an email whose domain is other than presumetech.com, then we display this validation error message. Email should be presumetech.com. The problem with this custom email validator is that the domain name presumetech.com is hard coded. So this custom validator only works if you want to check if the domain name is presumetech.com. What if you want to check another domain like microsoft.com? del.com etc. Every time we want to change the domain, we have to change the custom validator function. Now our goal is to make this custom validator reusable with any domain name. We should be able to pass the domain name as a parameter to this custom validator function instead of hard coding it like this. So here is what we want to be able to do. When we tie our custom validator function to a form control that we want to validate. In this case, we want to validate the email form control. And here is our custom validator function, email domain. And notice, we are passing the domain name that we want to check as a parameter to our validator function. In this case, we are validating if the domain name is del.com. If we want to validate a different domain name, we simply pass that domain name as a parameter instead. Some of the built-in validators like min, max, min length, max length, etc. also have parameters. So let's take a look at one of these built-in validators to see how the Angular team has implemented passing parameters. All the built-in validators are present in this validators class. Notice this min validator function. It has a parameter called min of type number. So it is taking in a number as a parameter and returning validator fn. So what is validator fn? Validator fn stands for validator function. So this min built-in validator takes in a number as a parameter and returns another validator function. The important thing to keep in mind is the returned validator function should adhere to the signature specified by this interface. So that return function should take in abstract control as an input parameter and it should either return validation errors or null. Null if the validation succeeds, otherwise validation errors object. So we are talking about a function returning another function. If you understand the concept of closure in JavaScript, then this is very easy to understand. We discussed closures in detail in parts 27 and 28 of JavaScript tutorial. So what is a closure? Well, in simple terms, you can think of a closure as a function inside another function. That is, an inner function and an outer function. Inner function has access to the outer function's variables and parameters in addition to its own parameters and variables. Now the task at hand for us is to convert this email domain function to take in the domain name that we want to validate as a parameter and return a validator function. To be able to do this, we are going to take advantage of closures in JavaScript. Let's call the parameter domain name. This is of type string. In the function body, let's use return keyword and a fat arrow right here. So here's the crucial part to understand. Notice our email domain function is taking in the domain name to validate as an input parameter and it is returning a function. The function that we are returning, its body starts at this curly brace and ends at this curly brace. So let's include a semicolon right here. If you notice, we have a closure here that is a function returning another function. So our email domain function is returning another function and that function starts here and ends here. This is an anonymous function because it does not have a name. And here is the signature. It takes in the abstract control that we want to validate as an input parameter and returns either an object if there is a validation error or null if the validation succeeds. Now this inner anonymous function has got access to the outer functions, parameters and variables in addition to its own parameters and variables. So instead of having the domain name presumetech.com, 
hard coded here, we can actually use this parameter name. To make the comparison case insensitive, let's convert the domain name to lowercase. We do not have the domain name hard coded anymore within our validator. This means our next important step is when we tie this validator with a form control, we will have to pass the name of the domain that we want to validate against as a parameter to this email domain function. Notice when I hover the mouse over this email domain validator, from the IntelliSense, we can see it has got a parameter domain name of type string. Now let's pass the domain name that we want to validate as del.com. Now notice when I enter an email address whose domain is not del.com, we get the validation message. In the message, it says pregemtech.com instead of del.com. So let's also update the validation message. Notice now we have the correct validation error. If I enter the domain name as del.com, the validation error disappears. If I enter any other domain name other than del.com, we have the validation error appear again. Here is our custom validator with a parameter that we just implemented. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.